Salam, hello and welcome. I'm making this video with regards to an issue that I noticed as my bike was parked at home. I'll show you what I noticed. I have noticed few oil drops under the bike. I was actually scratching my head. The gear oil was in level. And since this is two strokes, there's only one kind of oil in the engine. So the, the leak is not coming from the engine. I also noticed a strong fuel smell. And when I checked, I found that the leak was coming from the carburetor overflow vent. Yeah, so the fuel is coming from this car. However, this is not the only part of that issue. Carbs are not the only guilty party here. That's because when I'm not using the bike, I always keep the fuel switch on the off position. Since I'm having this issue, what that means, it's a combination of defects. So that means that the fuel valve itself is defected because on off position, it still supplies fuel to the carburetors. I'll take the fuel tank out, replace this fuel switch, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, guys. So I went and I got myself a brand new fuel switch, and it comes with an o-ring this is the o-ring for it in order to be able to gain access to that fuel switch i'll have to take the whole fuel tank out i have emptied the fuel tank drained all the fuel earlier and now i'm going to disconnect the fuel line usually the fuel line is held with one clamp and it's one screw that you need to deal with to get it loose i have multiple clamps because i installed this fuel filter but I'm going to disconnect it from here. And when it doesn't come off easily like this, it helps to pry it out from the other end with a flat head screwdriver when it doesn't come, come out easily like this. Now is the time to take the fuel tank out and the fuel tank on the Banshee is typically uh, installed or held in place by four screws. So two of them are here straight on the chassis frame um, and the other two are here at the handlebar area. This is one of them and here's the other guy. These are not the typical screws that you will find on a stock Banshee because this is an aftermarket tank so I had to make adjustment to, um, to cope with the tank size and dimensions like these extensions here and those these are washers which are those used to be chassis part for one of my RC cars and I found it useful to cut it and have it here Okay, so this guy here is 4mm hex drive and I usually apply Loctite on it. Yeah, here's the screw on the washer. The tank now is completely ready to be taken out. Uh, from previous experience, this will require some maneuvering. It's not gonna happen right away. As you can see, the fuel switch is mounted by two screws. This guy here and that guy over there. So I'll take these out. And these are Phillips screws. I'm trying to find the right Phillips bit because this is really tight. Yeah, this one seems okay. It's very important to make sure that the tip you are using is making extreme perfect grip on it. I had to do some extreme measures just to make sure I don't ruin the screw. Yeah, 
That was easy. There you go. Always make sure that the um, switch sits on a nice and clean and straight surface. If it's not straight, because this one seems to be like uh, it's pending a little, it's it's not totally straight. So I'm going to use the RTV to help seal in it. So the tank is out of the bike. This is an excellent opportunity to actually wash it and clean it from the inside. The best way to do that is actually wash it with fuel. I'm not gonna wash it with water or soap or anything like that. So I'll pour some fuel in there, just a, a tiny bit, um, shake it around and then throw it out. And I'll do this a couple of times until I make sure that there is no debris or dirt or anything left inside the tank. Okay, so I'm going to apply RTV on the switch uh, at this end before I install it on the tank. And that's because I believe that the surface here is not fully straight, is not 100% straight. Ideally, you should be installing the switch uh, with this gasket or o-ring and it should prevent any leakage. But I have done this a few years ago and it didn't work on this tank. So I know that the surface here is not straight, so I'm going to use RTV for this. Quickly before it dries, I'll just install it. I don't care if there's excess RTV, that's okay. This is the typical screw for the fuel switch. And I'm not gonna install it. Instead, I'll be installing this one. Because I always have a phobia with Philips, if the head strips, then it's a nightmare to get the screw out, so I'm just going to install this. And I'm going to apply equal pressure on both screws in the beginning before I torque them. done and done cool so that's it there you go a new fuel switch on the fuel tank now I'm going to let the RTV dry completely before I reinstall the tank again okay now is the time to install the fuel tank and make sure that there are no fuel leaks Cool, so now with the tank installed, I'm ready to connect the fuel line. Actually now I'm ready to fill the tank with fuel and I keep an eye on everything underneath, make sure that there is no leak. Okay, so now I'm going to open the fuel switch, put it on on position, and my main focus will be to check if there are any fuel leaks. Okay, so this is the new fuel switch that I installed. Uh, it turns out to be rubbish. I noticed as I um, switch it on and off, a couple of drops falls down on the cylinder head. So this is one number two. It's taller than the stock fuel switch, and it's nearly coming in contact with the cylinder head and I don't like this. So I'm going to replace this again. I'll install an uh, OEM one, original one. Yeah, that was the job. All right, so back to the fuel valve or fuel switch. I installed one previously 
and uh, it was an aftermarket one, but it was a rubbish one. It was longer than this, and every time I turned on or off, uh, actually turn it on and off position, it wasn't as easy and smooth as this one. Uh, it was a bit harder than this one. But every time I did that, a couple of drops were falling from the switch on the cylinder head. And the last thing anybody wants is uh, fuel drops going on hot surfaces like cylinder head because that's a good fire starter. So I went to the dealership and I bought an um, original OEM Yamaha fuel switch or fuel cock or fuel valve. I installed it the same way that I installed this, the previous one. Um, following the same steps that I have showed you. Connected the fuel line and then filled the tank with gas and made sure that there are no leaks. Learn from my mistake, if you have to change your fuel valve, go for an original one. Forget about the aftermarket ones. They might be tempting, it might be a simple setup. One can think that, okay, it's a very simple thing, what can go wrong? But uh, obviously, yeah, it can go wrong. So go with the original. Uh, again, this is one of the parts where highly recommended that you go with original parts or high quality parts. So if you need to change your fuel switch or fuel cock, these are the steps. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, be safe and do it yourself.